Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and today I have a video for you about Skylum's Luminar. So what I'm going to show you is actually a kind of a cool trick that I found that will enable you to use Luminar as a plugin in Lightroom and still keep your edits non-destructive. So there's kind of a workaround to this, so it's a little bit of a cheat, but uh, let me just dive in and show you what I mean. So if you're using uh, Lightroom as it is and you're using Luminar as a plugin for it, uh, you might do something like go up here, edit in and Luminar 2018. So what this basically does is it creates a TIFF version of your image and sends it to Luminar, um, which will work in plugin mode. So then we can go and make some changes. So for example, if I just turn up the AI filter. Now, as soon as I hit apply, those changes are baked into the file and it's sent back as a TIFF file. Now, when you're in the plugin mode, you can actually save it as a Luminar file, but that file won't be reconnected back to, to Lightroom. So if I just hit apply here, I'll show you what happens. So that just sends the TIFF file back to Lightroom and those edits are now baked into the file and I can't go back in and have load that up with all my settings as you would say, for example, if you were just working in Lightroom. Um, so if you want to keep all your parameters non-destructive, the only really way to do it would be to load it um, independently into Luminar and then save it as a file and then open it back up again. However, I've come up with kind of a workaround. So it involves using Photoshop. And by doing it this way, you can actually keep your edits non-destructive and there's a few other advantages as well. So let me just show you what I mean. So if we go back to the raw version of this image again, okay, and this time what I want to do is go photo, edit in, and then this is the important part. You want to open a smart object in Photoshop. Okay, so now that the image has loaded into Photoshop as a smart object, if we look down here, if we double click on this, we will bring up the camera raw controls. And as you can see, it's kept the link to the raw file and all these parameters that we had already adjusted in Lightroom are all still available. Um, so they remain non-destructive, so we have kind of kept the link to them. But that's not what we're here for, that's not what I want to do. So I'm gonna hit cancel here because we don't need this. Okay, so because this has loaded as a smart object, I can now use Luminar as a filter. And because it's a smart object, it will keep it non-destructive. Okay, so now that we're in Luminar, let me just make a few changes so that I can show you what I mean. So I'm just going to randomly change a few things. So I'm not looking to make a nice image here. I'm just looking to do something that uh, just kind of illustrates the point. Okay, so now I've made some changes to the image. So you can see I've kind of tweaked lots of parameters here and then and I hit apply, this will send it back to Photoshop. Okay, so now that we're back in Photoshop, if we look down here in the layers panel, in fact, let me just bring it up a bit. So you can see that Luminar is applied as a smart filter. So the advantage of that is uh, the everything that we've just made, all the changes, they remain editable. So this is non-destructive now. So if I double click on this, this will open up Luminar again. And as you can see, all our parameters are still where we set them. So everything's still editable. It's still all non-destructive. And I can go ahead and make more changes. I can do before and after. Okay, so uh, if I want, I can hit either apply to make the kind of changes I've just made update. So we'll do that. Okay, so now because this is a smart object, uh, inside a Photoshop file, all I have to do is save the Photoshop file. So this will send it back to Lightroom as a Photoshop file and everything will remain still editable. Everything is non-destructive. So I can go back in and change the original camera raw properties and that will actually cause the Luminar side of things to update. And the Luminar parameters still remain editable as well, all contained inside the Photoshop file. So if I close this now, in Photoshop and I switch back over to Lightroom. The Photoshop file is now in Lightroom, but everything is still editable. So I can go in here and go edit in Photoshop. And 
and I want to edit original. So this will now open it back up in Photoshop. And it's still a smart object. We still have the Luminar uh, as a smart filter, so I can go back in and edit those uh, settings. But not only that, I can do something like this. So for example, if I double click on this now, this will bring up the original camera raw properties. So I can do something like I can change the exposure, for example, and maybe change the contrast. And we bring up the clarity bit and say the vibrance. Okay, so as soon as it, I hit OK, this will now update the Luminar filter. Now it's a bit kind of long-winded because it has to actually launch Luminar to do it. As you can see, it says plugin started in automatic mode. So that's basically what happens when it's updating. So you can't actually do anything while this is doing this. So basically this just reloads the image we just kind of updated from the camera raw properties and is now reapplying the set that we had all Luminar before. So there you have it, there it is back in Photoshop now with the updated settings um, and everything is still non-destructive. So it is a bit slow, if, especially if you're using an older computer and a large file, like uh, I'm using a 2012 Mac Pro and it's quite slow on this system. Um, but my system is getting slow anyway for <laughs> reasons, probably nothing to do with the software. Um, but yeah, so if I just save this now, I can send this back to Lightroom. Um, and as I said, everything is still editable. So. It's a roundabout way of sorting out the problem of using Luminar as a plugin in Lightroom and keeping it non-destructive. So it's kind of, I think it's useful to know. Um, and especially if you use it a lot, I think this could be, a, it's a kind of a cool trick. So here we are back in Lightroom now with the updated image. And as I said, everything is still editable. So that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video useful. And if you do, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.